Male genital dimensions vary dramatically by ethnicity, right? I mean, the world is colorful, people look very different, so why should they be uniform in the middle of the body? Everybody knows this. Chinese men are tiny, African men are huge. You know what? This stereotype really bugs me. If you're Chinese, everyone laughs, even if you outmeasure every guy in the room. And if you're African and your manhood is small, you'll never be seen in a public shower. Never. Ever. That's why I've studied every scientific paper on anatomic measurements I could get my hands on. I've examined men of all origins over the last 27 years. I've worked in multiple countries across cultures. And by now, I've personally looked under the hood of over 30,000 men, if you know what I mean. With all that experience, I can confidently say this. The world is full of myths and anatomical stereotypes are some of the worst. I even found major scientific flaws in studies you've probably seen hyped in the media. So if you want to know what's really going on, I'll break it down for you in this video. I'm Dr. Stefan Buntrock, board certified urologist and specialist in sexual health. Let's get into it. And what a spectacular topic this is, because it's a jungle of data. And like within a real jungle, there are poisonous snakes, anaconda swamps, and shrieking macaques in the treetops. If you are not a local, you surely get lost. You might end up caught in the web of a big-membered spider trapped alongside a bunch of little-membered, misinformed strangers. So, what I did is this. I have an impressive collection of scientific articles on the topic that I processed for this video. And I can tell you one thing up front. Whenever measurements are self-reported, we see a Pinocchio effect. You know, the puppet whose nose grew whenever he lied. Give a man a tape ruler and watch him grow when he tells you the result. In other words, men lie about their size if you give them the chance to. So if a man tells you what he's packing, I'll give you the correct number to subtract. So you can estimate what's actually going on. But before, here are some important aspects. Given the amount of data I have compiled, I have reason to believe the general finding to be true. But here are the flaws I must address. Otherwise, it will be difficult for you to follow along. Measuring itself is difficult just because you need a representative cross-section. Otherwise, your data could easily be skewed. Luck of the draw would be the best strategy. Ideally, you'd pick a random sample of the population, lottery style. But imagine this in practice. Someone knocks on your door in a lab coat and says, congratulations, you've won the winner lottery. Not gonna happen. Here's another strategy. No joke. You can make them drunk first. A condom company tried that. They had trained medical staff, all right, but then they set up the examination facility in a tent behind a Mexican nightclub. Guess who is going to volunteer? Average Joe? Highly unlikely. I think you are more likely to deal with tequila-fueled Donkey Kong. So, out of the blue to get your blood pressure up, Argentina wins. 15.2 centimeters or 5.98 inches. No other ethnic group came even close. Oops, sorry, now I said it. When it comes to high quality data, Argentinian men lead. None of you would have expected that, I'm sure. I can literally hear your thoughts. Where did they measure? Upper side, underside, bone pressed, erect or stretched? It was stretched, but I tell you something. Some of you always get upset when I cite stretched length instead of erect length. But let me tell you why doctors, including urologists like me, actually use stretched length in real practice. It's medically validated, strongly correlated with erection size, and removes all the noise caused by mood, room temperature, or whether you've had your coffee. If you are after a tenth of a millimeter precision for leaderboard purposes, sure, stretched length might disappoint you. But if you're looking for science, consistency, and actual health relevance, it's the gold standard. Now, let's calm down for a second before we go into the exhausting details. I'll make this quick. 
If you like my content, subscribe to Euro channel and hit the like button. Give me some digital applause because that's what it is and let's move on with the data. In my past videos, a lot of you demand to see direct comparisons of penis size by ethnicity based on real measurements. Not surveys, no fluff, just the truth. So I did exactly that. I compared clinically measured data to self-reported data side by side. You know what I found? Almost no ethnic group has both. That's right, no one bothered to measure and ask in the same study. I think that's a missed opportunity. So the truth is, most comparisons floating around out there are built on two different data sets, like trying to compare apples and oranges, then claiming one fruit is bigger. When I did find a few overlaps, like for Americans or Southern Europeans, there was a clear trend. Self-reported numbers are bigger, sometimes a lot bigger. Surprise, surprise. So whenever you hear claims like X group is the biggest, remember, if it's self-reported, it's probably wishful thinking. You want numbers? You get numbers. Just to avoid that tell us inches, no tell us centimeters game, here are the rules. I give you inches in brackets. As a rule, you will have to read them on screen. That saves me time and your nerves, okay? So here we go. Once we filter out all the self-reported nonsense, we are left with studies that actually did the hard work, literally and figuratively. That means measurements taken by medical professionals. Yes, they were from that country. Passport, race, same group. No, I don't know if they were born in the same zip code. Stop asking. In these studies, they used standardized methods. If possible, a real cross-section of the population was measured. Let's look at a few highlights. Middle Eastern countries like Saudi Arabia and Iran clinically measured average erect lengths around 13.7 to 14.3 centimeters. Vietnam, which many of you assume would be tiny, actually came in with an average stretched length of 14.67 centimeters in a massive high quality clinical study that's longer than most European data sets. Speaking of Europe, Southern Europeans, Italy in one study reported an average erect length of 16.78 centimeters. Oh, but wait, that was self-measured. The physician measured flaccid lengths in a different Italian study, more modest. Here's a number I promised you earlier. The typical difference between self-reported and third-party measurements is one centimeter or 0.41 inches. This is what the analysis of the data comparison showed. So you meet a man who claims to have seven inches, subtract half an inch. So what about sub-Saharan Africa? Nigerian men had a stretched length of 13.37 centimeters. Tanzanian men showed average girth, not extraordinary. And then there's Argentina. Out of all the clinically measured high quality studies, Argentinian men had the longest average stretched length, 15.2 centimeters. Let me say that again for the people in the back. Argentina, not Congo, not the adult film industry, Argentina. In summary, you can twist and bend it how you want. Six inches are not average. I know some of you will not believe me, but I can assure you I didn't do black magic to extract these numbers. This is not a trick. Truth is, although there may be subtle general differences, from a global perspective, the differences are subtle. It is not like with the African and Indian elephant. You know, big ears on the African elephant, small ears on the Indian. There are small and large penises in all parts of the world. There are large ones even in China. And there are small ones in Africa. Okay, that's average. That doesn't tell us much about data dispersion. What are the smallest ones in the country? What are the largest? What is the range most men in each country fall into? I have done a lot of these videos and I will link the playlist at the end. There you will also find more information about statistical terms. Most of you who comment on my videos fall into a common trap. It is called selection bias. It goes like this. Men with nothing to show, show nothing. Men who have something to show, show off all the time. 
It's like in birds, where the males present their feathers to the females. This means, if you go places for show of opportunities, you will be rewarded with rare sights of the most magnificent feathers the human race has to offer. Don't make the mistake to think that everybody is built that way. That assumption is wrong. However, I want to stay honest, which means a critical review of the scientific data is absolutely needed. You know, the truth is, science doesn't really care about this kind of measurement. In my opinion, science lacks large-scale systematic measurements in all parts of the world. Much of what is published is based on self-assessment and even the last big meta-analysis that was hyped on the internet had major flaws. You may have heard about it. They found that penis size had increased by nearly 25% over the last 29 years. Although aiming to exclude self-measured data, they included a lot of it. That's a serious blow to scientific credibility. Lack of scientific data opens up for the possibility that six inches may be average nevertheless, or even more. However, with the data at hand today, there is no reason to believe that. And there is no reason to believe that racial stereotypes hold true. Still find that hard to believe? Then binge watch the videos in this playlist. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.